evening, everyone. Um, my name is Steve Ricks. I'm the composer of this last piece of the program. Uh, I teach composition here at BYU. And, and anyway, very, very uh, excited and happy that uh, Bill is able to make it out here. Uh, Bill commissioned this piece for me, which I was very honored that he approached me about writing a piece for him. And uh, I thought he, he invited me just to say a few words about it. And uh, so I'm, I'm happy to do that right now and then hopefully not get too verbose and then we can get right into it. Um, so I'm a, I'm a trombonist, or a, I guess you could say an erstwhile trombonist, or a, a whatever, delinquent trombonist. I, I'm, I'm out of practice, but um, so it's been great hearing Bill's recital tonight, some beautiful music, beautifully played, and it really sort of made me long for the uh, older days when I, I could actually play and, and make some good sounds. Um, so, um, the idea of writing a piece for trombone maybe is, seems like something natural, but really I think this is probably my first mature piece I've ever written for trombone. I've written a lot of music for other instruments, but uh, I don't know, maybe, I'm not sure why I, I shied away from, from the trombone. But um, at the time Bill invited me to write this piece, I was reading some Kurt Vonnegut short stories, and, and <laughs> one that I read in particular kind of was sticking with me and ended up being kind of the springboard for this piece. It's a, it's a story called Report on the Barn House Effect. And it's, it's kind of a quirky story where the, that basically reports how this professor figures out that he has the power to control things with his mind. He starts by just rolling dice and realizing that by concentrating, he can get the dice to come up the way he wants them to. Um, but then he sort of practices that power and it gets stronger and stronger until finally uh, he basically is able to bring about world peace because he can sort of, you know, disarm complete countries' armaments and, and, and you know, disenthrone uh, you know, dictators and stuff just by the power of his mind. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a somewhat abstract piece of instrumental music, so it may be hard to see the direct connection, but um, uh, basically, you know, I think of the trombone as a pretty powerful instrument, you know, it's, it's, it can play loud, it's very directional, so, you know, when it point, we, we heard that definitely with the last piece, you know, wherever, whatever it's pointing, you really get the power of its sound. It's got that slide that's coming at you, so you gotta watch out. Uh, so, so just the, uh, the idea of something powerful like a weapon or whatever, I, I thought, well, yeah, the trombone is kind of like that. The, the other thing that occurred to me was this idea of controlling things with your mind. So uh, thus enter the sculpture that you see in front of you. Um, the, the person who created this is uh, Brian Christensen, sculptor here at, at BYU. He said he might make it tonight. Brian, are you here? No? Okay. Um, anyway, he, uh, I collaborated with Brian and another artist on an installation project uh, that included some cast brains, like, kind of like the one you see there. So I knew he was already, you know, he had a brain mold, basically, <laughs> that, he could, that he could, you know, cast at a moment's notice. He could whip up a ceramic brain for you or whatever if you want. So, um, so anyway, I got thinking about this piece, and at one point, you know, my ideas were really elaborate, like, wow, what if, what, if there, what if this piece included a robot, you know, a metal robot that was sort of like interacting with the trombone and everything. And, uh, but I, I sort of got more modest in my, in my thoughts about the piece as time went on. But I did decide to, to collaborate with this sculptor, Brian Christensen, and, and uh, one of the trombones that's included in the sculpture is one I got from Will Kimball, the uh, trombone professor here at BYU, who's also featured on this piece. It's a duet. Um, and then Brian just happened to have a bunch of, you know, brass and saxophone and other instruments that, that he had acquired because he's always salvaging things. And so he just kind of, we, we kind of talked about different ideas and he, he put this together. And so my idea was that this would be a sort of uh, sculpture that would uh, be a kind of performer along with the two trombonists in this piece. And, and a sort of imaginary narrative or kind of began to unfold in my mind, and that was that, you know, as the piece begins, the, the trombonists are kind of exerting their own will, doing their own thing, but as the piece goes and goes, the, this mind starts to try to impose its will on the, on the two trombonists. And so you'll kind of see them get kind of reined in and then they'll put on those headphones, almost kind of like they're plugging into that brain and it's starting to try to control them. 
And then there's some other overt things that happen in the electronics and stuff that, that attempt to kind of personify this, this sculpture, which I'm sure you'll, you'll recognize. But uh, anyway, so there is, in addition to the two trombonists who are playing, uh, there's going to be sound coming out of these speakers and all the speakers on the sides of you at the, in the hall there. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to, when I'm done with my little spiel, which is going to be very soon, about 15 seconds here, I'm going to uh, press play. And, and then uh, I'll sort of make my way to the back of the hall just so I can kind of be in touch with how loud things are and, and either turn them up or turn them down in case I need to. So I'll kind of be a partial performer of the piece too and even at the beginning here you'll kind of see me moving around and making my way to the back of the stage. So I apologize, or back of the hall, so I apologize for that. But um, anyway, I guess that's about it. I hope you enjoy Force of the Mind. Thanks for coming tonight.
No.
advised him. Professor Barnhouse really died. Be advised. Professor Barnhouse really died. But not dynamosychism. Not the Barnhouse effect.